Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma Dasya Yato Vivayad Itaratas Chartesu Abhigya Swarat Janma Dasya Yatam Vajan Itaratas Chartesu Abhigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikabaye Muyanti Atsurayaha Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikabaye Muyanti Atsurayaha Tejo Varimadam Yata Vini Vayo Yatra Chisargo Misha Damna Svena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Svena Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O all-pervading personality of Godhead Or from my respectful base, it is not to you I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the Absolute Truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen in water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, though they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in a transcendental boat, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra Paramo Nirmatsana Nam Satam Paramo Nirmatsana Nam Satam Vityam Vastavam Atra Vastu Vityam Vastavam Atra Vastu Sivadam Tapa Trayon Unam Sivadam Tapa Trayon Unam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parir Ishwaraha Kimba Parir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hide Avurudyate Tra Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyatam. Sukumakad amrita dravya samyatam. Pipata bhagavatam rasamalayam. Pipata bhagavatam rasamalayam. Mohor ahoraska bhuvibhavukaha. Mohor ahoraska bhuvibhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hiryantak Stobhadrani Vidu Nati Shrihitsatam To appear, hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praesu badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhavo kamaloba dayasche cheta itayaranavidam stitvam satve prasiddhati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam mukta sangha sijayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate becomes steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate hridaya grantis jidyante sarvasamsaya Siyante Chasyakarmani Drista Evatmanishwade. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of Asamsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Kanta 1, Chapter 15, Text Number 10. Patinyas, Patinyas Tava, Vimaka, Klipta, Mahabhisheka, Slagis, Dakcharu, Kabaram, Kitavai, Sabayam. Spistam Rikirya Padayo Patitasru Mukya Yatir Tasriyo Kritahate Savimukta Keshaha Translation by Srila Prabhupada. It was he only who loosened the hair of all the wives of the miscreants who dared open the cluster of your queen's hair, which had been nicely dressed and sanctified for the great Rajasuya sacrificial ceremony. At that time, she dealt, fell down at the feet of Lord Krishna with tears in her eyes. Purport, Rajas Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada. Queen Draupadi <coughs> had a beautiful bunch of hair 
which was sanctified in the ceremonial function of the Rajasri Yajna. But, Shen, but when she was lost in a bed, Dushasana touched her glorified hair to insult her. Draupadi then fell down at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna decided that all the wives of Dushasana and company should have their hair loosened as a result of the battle of Kurukshetra. Thus, after the battle of Kurukshetra, after all the sons and grandsons of Dhritarashtra died in the battle, all the wives of the family were obliged to loosen their hair as widows. In other words, all the wives of the Kuru family became widows because of Dushashana's insulting a great devotee of the Lord. The Lord can tolerate insults upon himself by any miscreant because the father tolerates even insults from the son. But he never tolerates insults upon his devotees. By insulting a great devotee, one has to forego all the results of pious acts and benedictions also. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. We can see from this uh, verse and purport the devastating effect of Vaishnava Aparag. In other words, insulting a pure devotee who's dedicated their lives to propagating the holy names of the Lord is uh, devastating, has a devastating effect. Because, as it says, Krishna may tolerate insults to himself, but he never tolerates insults and offenses against his devotee. And this is normal because Krishna promises to defend and protect devotees. In fact, it also says in Bhagavad Gita, uh, second chapter, Verse number 40 something. Yeah. 45. Chai gunya vishaya veda, nistra gunya bavarjana, nir dvandra nitya satvasto, nir yoga shema atmavan. So this nir yoga shema atmavan, what does that mean? It means. <coughs> Near yoga shema, free from ideas of gain and protection. And atma van established in the self. So, gain and protection. Shem, uh, yoga and shema. Shema means protection. So, the devotee at one point realizes that their only hope is to have the protection of Krishna. That is a sign of uh, humility and surrender to the Lord. So, therefore, um, by surrendering to the Lord, the Lord accepts the responsibility to protect the devotee. And that is called Shema. So he says, uh, shut up, uh, he says, <clears throat> so, abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So, the process of surrender, anukuyena sankalpa pratikuyena varjanam, rakshisyai siti varanam, I'm sorry, Rasiksai Siti Vishwaso, Atmanik Sepa, Gotrit Varanam Tata, Atmanik Sepa, Karpanye Sadvida Saranam Gati. So this Raksisai Siti, Yaksisa Titi Vishwaso is very important. It means that one should be confident that in all conditions, in all circumstances, Krishna will protect him from all difficulties. 
There's no need of thinking how one should keep the body and soul together. Krishna will see to that. So that is gain and safety. One should always think himself helpless and should consider Krishna the only basis for his progress in life. So this is the conviction of the devotee. He's, he's guaranteed this by Krishna and he's sure that Krishna will keep his promise. Why? Because Krishna doesn't promise himself. He tells, tells Arjuna, declare it boldly, Arjuna, my devotee will never perish. So sometimes Krishna breaks his promise out of love for his devotees. So therefore, he doesn't say it himself. He has Arjuna say it. Kuntia pratijani hinami bhakta pranasyati. Because Arjuna will never break his promise. Okay, so this is the, the conviction. This is the surety that it's the bottom line faith of a devotee. Rakshisya titi vishwaso. That there's no that the Lord will always protect his devotee from all difficulties. Does it mean there'll be no there'll be no difficulties? No, there's going to be difficulties. That's the nature of the material world. But the devotee knows that somehow or other he's going to be able to weather the storm, as they say in English, or be able to 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 tolerate all those difficulties and overcome the obstacles to uh, Krishna consciousness. Adresta sarvabhuta nam maitra karana evacha nirmama nirhankara samadukha sukham sami santusta satatam yogi yatatma dhritta nishchaya mai arpitamano buddhir yomad bhakta sami priya so this verse 12, 13, and 14 says that uh, one who is not envious, but a kind friend to all living entities. Advaita Sarva Bhutanam. You have to be a kind friend to all living entities. Who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego. Near Mama, near Hankara. Who is equal in both happiness and distress. Well, uh, Samadukha Sukha Shami. Equal in both happiness and and distress, and who is Shami, who is tolerant. Santusta uh, Satatam Yogi is always satisfied and self controlled, is a yogi. Santusta Satatam Yogi, Yatatma Dritanishtaya, and he is. Uh, engaged in devotional service with determination. His mind and intelligence on me. <clears throat> Such a devotee is very dear to me. So this is the this is different than being a materialist and depending on one's own strength. This is being completely dependent on the mercy and goodwill of Krishna. Therefore, uh, this is a description of pure devotional service. Uh, the Lord, in, this, in these two verses, 12th chapter, 13th and 14th verse, describes the qualities of a pure devotee. First of all, he's never disturbed in any circumstances, nor is he envious of anyone, nor does a devotee become his enemy's enemy. He thinks, this person has become my enemy due to my own past deeds. So it is better to suffer than to protest. Now, this is something people say, oh, wait a minute, that's just a, that's a cop-out. That's, that's the, the uh, uh, culture of the weaklings. Better to suffer than to protest. But no, it requires greater strength to uh, suffer than to protest. So, in Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14a, it is said, Tate nukam pam susamiksamano bhumjana evat mikritam vipakam. Whenever a devotee is in distress 
or has fallen into difficulty, he thinks that it is the Lord's mercy upon him. This is exactly opposite of what most, most people think. They think, oh, if there was a God, he wouldn't let this happen to me. This proves that there's no God. But no, the devotee accepts uh, these distressful situations or difficult situations as the mercy of God. Why? Well, he says, thanks to my past misdeeds, I should suffer far, far greater than I'm suffering now. So it's by the mercy of the Supreme Lord that I'm not getting all the punishment I am due. I'm just getting a little by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the devotee remains always calm, quiet, and patient despite many distressful conditions. Okay, so is it possible to be like this? Yes, if you have faith in Krishna. If you have no faith, then it's impossible to act like this. That's why most people don't act like this. But when a person is actually uh, fully faithful and knows that God exists and that the material world is a place of suffering, anityam asukam lokam, it's a temporary place full of suffering. Therefore, one, one expects that there's going to be some happiness and there's going to be suffering in this life. But one is not hindered in doing their devotional service, nor discouraged. It's just like there may be a great storm, and then it begins, and then it develops, and it gets very severe, and then it begins to abate, and eventually it goes away, and then the nice weather comes back again. So, So, Sitosna, sometimes it's summer, sometimes it's winter, sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's too cold. But uh, one should be dira, one should learn to tolerate these things because they're going to come and there's, they're going to go. Uh, just like even in the Armenian language, there's a saying, Tzachor Torer Tzimran Naman Gukana Girtan Vahadil Virtun in Gukana Girtan, which means there are adverse days, like summer and winter, that uh, that come and go. One should not be discouraged by them because they come and go. So, if we have this tolerance based on our faith in Krishna, then all problems will eventually go away and be resolved. It's just a question of being tolerant and waiting patiently. And while you're waiting, you, you double down on your devotional service and you're chanting your rounds. Therefore, one is not disturbed even in the most distressful conditions. Therefore, Prabhupada says, the devotee is always calm, quiet, and patient despite many distressful conditions. And a devotee is always kind to everyone, even to his enemy. Nirmama means that a devotee does not attach much importance to the pains and trouble pertaining to the body because he knows perfectly well that he's not the material body. He does not identify with the body. Therefore, he is freed from the conception of false ego and is equipoised in happiness and distress. So as long as we identify with the body, we, we develop this false ego. But if we identify with the soul and its relationship to Krishna and not with the temporary body and its relationship to the material world, then we remain a free of false ego and equal poise. That means equal in all situations, happiness or distress, pain or, uh, uh, pain or suffering, etc. Therefore, the devotee is tolerant and satisfied with whatever comes by the grace of the Supreme Lord. He does not endeavor much to achieve something with great difficulty. Therefore, he's always joyful. He is a completely perfect mystic because he's fixed in the instructions received from the spiritual master and because his senses are controlled, he's determined. He's not swayed by false arguments 
because no one can lead him from the fixed determination of devotional service. He is fully conscious that Krishna is the eternal Lord, so no one can disturb him. All these qualifications enable him to fix his mind and intelligence entirely on the Supreme Lord. Such a standard of devotional service is undoubtedly very rare, but a devotee becomes situated in that stage by following the regulative principles of devotional service. Furthermore, the Lord says that such a devotee is very dear to him, for the Lord is always pleased with all his activities in full Krishna consciousness. This is a description of a pure devotee, and we should all strive to attain such a exalted position. It's not impossible. It's very possible by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and the Vaishnava Acharyas, especially Srila Prabhupada. Okay, so as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, a faithful person who's dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues the senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge. And having achieved it, he quickly attains supreme spiritual peace. That's the formula for peace and happiness in spite of all the distresses of the material world. Fourth chapter, 40th verse, Krishna says, but ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down for the doubting soul. There is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. I am locosti na paro nasukam samsayat manaha. It's a very important statement here by Krishna. Such people who doubt the validity of the scriptures, who doubt the existence of Krishna, they don't have happiness in this world and nor in the next world. They take birth again in low species of life and just suffer all over again. <clears throat> Therefore, this development of faith in the message of Krishna and the words of Krishna is the essential thing. And the only way you can do that, develop such faith, is here regularly. This Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, spoken by genuine devotees. And that regular hearing, eventually something penetrates the hard, uh, let's say, shell of the head <laughs> and goes into the subtle mind and you and then you become convinced yes krishna is god krishna does exist there is a spiritual world and i have an eternal relationship with krishna i'm not this body i'm the soul and and my consciousness has been contaminated but by regular chanting and practicing krishna consciousness following strictly the rules and regulations i can also overcome material attachments and completely dedicate my body, my mind, my intelligence, everything I have in the service of Krishna. So this was uh, devastating for <laughs> Dushasan and Karna and, and uh, Duryodhan to try and insult a pure lady and devotee like Draupadi. So whenever there is abominable behavior and treatment of women and children, some, stra some great tragedy is going to take place. Al already that's the tragedy, but then there's going to be a terrible reaction, just like we saw what happened to uh, ISIS. They, they uh, invaded uh, northern Iraq and, and uh, killed many Yazidi men and took their women and children captive and used the women as sex slaves. They were selling women for like $25 and selling kids for like $15, right? And the, and the women and children were exploited terribly by bestial men. But what happened to them? Most of them got wiped out. Yeah, they're still around, but they're, they're, they're being systematically wiped out. They lost everything. They had a big empire, 
called the Caliphate of, in, of most parts of uh, Syria and Iraq, and they lost everything in a matter of two years. So we see you cannot, you cannot insult, you cannot harm innocent women and children without expecting to get a terrible reaction. And then if, if, those, if a woman or the, is a pure devotee, and that's, that's the worst. So you see what happened to Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra. Their whole dynasty was wiped out. 640 million people killed in 18 days. It was a tremendous slaughter. All of Dhritarashtra's sons and grandsons, all killed. Therefore, one should never insult a devotee, and especially a female pure devotee. It's very, very serious. And one has, and Vaishnava Aparad will destroy one's life unless they beg for forgiveness. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jay, O Gorgeous Srila Prabhupada Haribo. Any questions? Okay. Go to Premanandi Haribo.